Do you subscribe to HBO? What kind of beer do you drink? Inquiring minds, including the presidential campaigns, want to know because of something called micro-targeting. This is the new frontier in personalized campaigning. It works by finding often baffling correlations between the stuff you like and who you're likely to vote for. Here's ABC's John Donvan. Are you ready to go? We're going to win. As this tight election heads toward a photo finish in 15 days, there are really two presidential campaigns taking place. There's the one you saw tonight on the debate stage. It's also there in the TV ads and the big speeches. But then there is the other campaign, a stealthier one, where messages get tailored just for you and are delivered not in front of the TV cameras, but right to your mailbox. They'll have a prediction of the likelihood that you are a gun owner. So the campaign can make sure that when they're talking about gun rights, they're just sending it to people that they think are very likely to own a gun. And not sending that same message to people who are not owning a gun. Their neighbor will get something else, get something not at all. It is called micro-targeting, says Sasha Eisenberg, author of a new book called The Victory Lab. You can have, a, theoretically, a different conversation with every person on a block. But in order to do that, they have to figure out who you are and what's important to you. How do they do that? Data, truckloads of it. In the modern world, you are leaving trails of information about yourself everywhere you go, and the campaigns are buying it up. They use it to build a profile of you. Say you watch 30 Rock and you drink Molson. That means you're probably a Democrat who votes frequently. If your beer of choice is a Coors Light, consumed while you're watching NCIS, odds are you're a loyal Republican. How much of this is about actually trying to change people's minds versus just trying to get people who would vote for you to go vote on election day? This is the big change in the way campaigns think in the last decade. It's far less about just changing people's minds and far more about modifying their behavior. And guess what? There's an app for that, as Sasha showed me the other day. The Obama campaign wants its supporters to knock on doors and get out the vote but not just any doors. And the campaign taken all the data that they have about voters and done these micro-targeting algorithms to sort through who they want their volunteers to talk to and who they want them to interact with. And so each of these flags represents one particular house. An election year shortcut to figuring out exactly who in this neighborhood is most likely to vote for their guy. So this is a real map of this street that we're on. Yes. And, yeah. and these flags represent Real houses. Real houses. Like, for instance, whoever lives at this house, which we're blurring a bit for privacy, the app knows stuff about this person. What do we know? There's a 73-year-old woman, and she's a registered Democrat. Her name begins with J. Begins with J, her last name begins with an R. So if you're sitting at home tomorrow afternoon, and there's a knock on the door, and it's an Obama volunteer or a Romney volunteer, they know something about you if they're knocking on your door. They know a lot about you, and they've made a whole lot of assumptions about you. So they're not at your door by accident? Not at all. No, we're, we're way past accidents. Which means campaign ads are popping up in the unlikeliest of places, like these Obama ads inside video games. One of the other variables that Obama's campaign in 2008 realized was helping to predict support for him was the presence of a teenager in the household. So they went out and found video games where you can buy ads within the video games and bought early vote reminders. And in this election, there's no such thing as too narrow a niche. In a mailer to homes in Northern Virginia where there is some Lyme disease concern, Romney told voters he's against it. So does it work? There's nothing to show definitely that these tactics put them over the finish line. Instead, Eisenberg says, that in the end, the single most important piece of predictive data isn't what beer you drink, but whether you're a registered Democrat or Republican, which is publicly available on the voter rolls. All the rest is extra, but it's a lot. So it's like they've got the whole neighborhood, they can see into the political soul of people who are even now sitting in their houses. Right, wow. And does that seem just a little creepy? The campaigns, even though they know that they have the tools to really target specific messages to voters are also aware that the cost of getting caught doing it if they contradict themselves are high. In other words, when they knock on your door, <laughs> Sorry to cause a fuss. We're out here knocking on doors. Just because they found you doesn't mean you have to answer. John Donvan, ABC News, Washington.